Okay, I made it through three of their games already. I can... I can definitely take on this one. Maybe, I don't know, this one really sucked. So I don't know about any of you guys, but mascot horror to me is a very... Uh, yeah, it's a genre. First popularized by the Five Nights at Freddy series, mascot horror is a fairly newer type of horror, with the whole premise being aimed more towards a younger audience. Typically, your usual mascot horror game revolves around the main character wandering around an abandoned or closed down family friendly place, like a daycare or a restaurant, trying to do whatever somebody would do in a closed place like that. However, the mascots of the place are like demonic or some shit and will end up trying to kill you in the most samey type of jump scare death imaginable. Some popular mascot horror games that come to mind are of course Five Nights at Freddy's, but there's also games like Poppy's Playtime or Choo Choo Charles that are widely noticed. A lot of the time though, mascot horror is known to be easy cash grabs as that once recognizable mascot will now be recognizable on every merch you could possibly think of. I'm sorry, did you say there's Poppy's Playtime's NFTs? I don't care, I'm too busy taking a fat dump on the FNAF toilet. However, there's one mascot horror game that takes the cake in sheer greed and is just notorious for being the worst mascot horror game that could possibly ever exist, Garden of Ban Ban. It is no secret to anybody that this series is absolute dog water. From dating all the way back to the first free Garden of Ban Ban released very early this year, which was nothing more than a glorified 10 minute demo, to the more recent $5 Garten of Ban Ban 3 that was just a glorified walking simulator, and then add the constant new additions of side merch and the fact that these chapters will never stop releasing, it becomes obvious that this series is just here to milk itself dry. A couple days ago though, Garten of Ban Ban Chapter 4 was released to Steam, and spoiler alert, it really really sucks. For some reason, the Fork Brothers decided to raise the price of this game to $10, with the only change being, and I shit you not, the inclusion of a special mascot horror game. It's the same walking simulator like all the other games, there's the exact same puzzles from the first game, but now there's apparently the indie horror cinematic universe with a collaboration with another mascot horror game. God help us all. Now me personally, I'm kind of a penny pincher. You know, why spend $10 on a pretty shit game where I can instead just buy some beer to go drunk driving? Because of that, I made this playthrough, this review more so, into a challenge. I needed to beat Garten of Ban Ban 4 in less than two hours so that way I can refund the game on Steam and get my hard earned 10 schmackaroos back. So with that, I brought in my timer, opened the game, had to mess around with the settings because for some reason the aspect ratio is 1280 by 720, and now, well, Here's where the fun begins. What the fuck is this? What am I looking at? Click the clock to advance time. <gasps> what the fuck is that? <laughs> A giant cinnamon bun is at the gate. Oh god, I'm scared already. Uh, anyways, never mind that castle or that weird Cinnabon character. The game first starts off with a minute 30 chase scene with a camera shaking that genuinely gave me whiplash against... What is this thing? Is this like a turtle or a dinosaur or- Oh wait, wait, this was the boss in the third chapter. Oh my god, wow, that's so cool. I love callbacks with characters. Anyways, you'll never get to see this thing ever again. Once that thing gets very awkwardly stuck, you solve some puzzles, find a yellow button, I guess, and then this happens. What the fuck just- What? <laughs> What the fuck? I am scared as fuck right now, boys. What was that? Who the fuck are you? <laughs> why Why does he have a southern accent? I'm gonna lie to this motherfucker. What? Have you ever come in contact with a threat shown up? Is that why he knocked me out? <laughs> is, is that the plot of Garten of Ban Ban 4? He knocked me out to do just an interview? Sadly, that was not the plot of Ban Ban 4. Instead, this amazing frog knockoff is the sheriff to an underground castle, home to the same four Unity Workshop assets being reused over and over and over again, who is ruled by the queen of this castle named Queen Doncilla, who is supposedly just a purple kangaroo, but on further inspection, this game cured my depression. Oh, fucking same. Already, anxiety, depression, all that, gone. I <laughs> what the fuck is that? <laughs> what kind of fucking dumbass looking rat is that? What the fuck? <laughs> oh, 
damn. God, dude, for free? Like that? Oh, damn. Damn, bro, I wouldn't even, like, take that if, if you gave me shit, bro. What is this? This thing is hands down a monstrosity. The sleep paralysis demon that I encounter way late at night looks like sunshine and rainbows compared to this purple rat. Anyways, just so you all know, there's gonna be so many moments where you just have to sit and wait for a character to give their inner monologue like this is a high school play. And for every lore dump that was given, I tuned it all out and paid absolutely no attention. Maybe I should talk less and see where that gets me. I'm not kidding you when I say over one third of the entire game consists of you just sitting there, waiting for any of these characters to give out their essay of a monologue. So, if there's any band banners watching this video right now, in the comments, give me a rundown on what actually happened in Gartna Band Band 4. Please and thank you. I do know that you're supposed to go to three other areas to find parts to fix an elevator, so leaving with Crazy Frog, you two go out and search for them. After solving a puzzle to get the part, you encounter the main bad guy for Ban Ban 4, the scariest creature to have ever existed. Men have cried to this, women have died from this. This thing likes to tell jokes in his bipolar. I think the scariest thing about this two-faced wannabe is how it looks. Look at it, look how it moves. It looks like it needs to take a massive dump, but it's just trying to hold it in. Whatever though, after it gets toasted, oh my god, what a... What a pun. I quickly make my way to this venting room to finally obtain the missing part. Okay, don't make an Among Us joke, Scrakes. Please, you are better than this. This puzzle really sucks, and you know it. Just no more Among Us, please. <laughs> imposter hideout. Yeah, guys, this was actually uh, the room that the imposter goes when he vents. Uh, cool little Among Us lore. I really hate you. After six minutes of just uninterrupted walking from one side of the map to the other, which takes about half of the entire game, I also am not shitting you on that, like this was Death Stranding levels of walking we're talking about here, I get to deal with another two minutes of boring conversation by the rat, in which she tells me that my friends are in the infirmary. So going down there, I have to deal with another two minute lore dump oh my god thankfully that was overshadowed by the fact that the pancreas eater breaks his neck trying to look at me what happened to me whatever i tried doing to you oh my god what the fuck actually me what the dude he's breaking his neck I tried to but nevertheless, I hate these lore dumps. Apparently, this is a disease that Red Guy has that he's trying to control, but he acts like the Hulk, so whenever he gets mad, he turns into, like, the pancreas eater. So that's why he betrayed you from the very beginning part of the game. Okay. Red Guy goes on to tell me that another friend of mine is locked up, which turns out to be the orange jellyfish that knocked you out like 20 times in the third chapter. Yeah, that guy. He's back. He once again knocks you the hell out, go figure. But in turn, the greatest cutscene to have ever existed in any form of gaming content gets played. No. No fucking- Choo Choo Charles? Come on. I've been waiting for this cameo. Could it? Yeah, but what kind of animal makes that sound? A train type of animal. <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> I, wow. They made me hate Choo Choo Charles. How did they do that? Oh my god, that was the flash levels of CGI explosion right there. That- oh wow! Did Michael Bay make this game? Little side note here, but I've heard a bunch of people discuss how Baldur's Gate 3 is this next massive game. Something that could pioneer the next level of gaming in terms of its openness and innovative features. But I'll ask you this, does Baldur's Gate 3 have Choo Choo Charles blowing the fuck up with the highest budget explosives money could buy? I thought not. Garten of Ban Ban 4 wipes the floor with Baldur's Gate. Going back to the transportation area, I still need to find two more pieces to fix the elevator. This time, though, the guy who wanted to eat my pancreas for the past two chapters wants to tag along with me and wants to now be my friend. Okay, I guess. But once going to this next area, the red guy goes ahead and betrays me by doing this. We're here. 
Let's get going. What the fuck happened to your microphone? <laughs> Why is he taking bro? No. Oh, I thought I was stuck for a second. What the fuck is happening? I could not move for like a good couple seconds. I, okay. I guess he would just wait up there. I, I don't know why the dialogue part. What's happening? Did, did I break the game? Oh no, Skrakes, you didn't break the game. The game broke the game. Apparently, this transportation system is already notorious for soft locking characters as their pathfinding will get broken once they leave the transportation area. And because the Euphoric Brothers wants to script every little thing in this game, the invisible wall that disappears when the red guy gets close to it will be there forever. This, you know, is a horrible speedrunning strat as so much time gets lost, making the quest for a refund so much much harder so if there's any speedrunners watching this right now take some notes about this soft locking issue oh and the euphoric brothers please fix your fucking game bro increasing your price doesn't mean you can also increase the amount of soft locks and bugs that are in your game homie. after fixing that issue and solving some puzzles that have been the exact same since the second chapter the red guy randomly caused the segue thing an imposter and tries to sacrifice it however the blue thing that nab nab creature comes out of nowhere steals it and you want to know what the red guy does in return he kills the blue dude like straight up absolute massacre please somebody give this game the mature rating it deserves this is not for the faint of heart anyways you get the second piece of the elevator good job you guys probably know what comes next time for another eight minutes of uninterrupted walking and then talking to the purple rat hooray this is so what i wanted when playing any game let alone a game that costs me ten dollars to play this time though you get the option of seeing more or visitors that came down here and are locked up or you can go straight to the final part i should have just done the latter option though as this was just another time waster that'll ruin my personal best for the refund speed run you know what i'm actually getting concerned on whether or not i can beat this in less than two hours i mean ten whole dollars is at stake we cannot let the euphoric brothers win this going to the final area you have to solve three different puzzles one cognitive one physical and one communicative the cognitive puzzle is a memory puzzle and I'll give the Euphoric Brothers credit where credit is due. This is at least a new puzzle in the Ban Ban Cinematic Universe, and it did stump me and my three second attention span brain. The next puzzle is the physical one, and it's not actually a puzzle. Instead, it's a boss fight. This is Kitty Soros, or what I like to call a toddler's POV when they see a pit bull. Your objective is to make the monster charge into the red dot that's projected whenever you step onto the opposite pressure plate. Although that sounds confusing, it's really not and it's definitely a step up from the other boss in chapter 3, but does that mean the fight is good? Well... Come on. What? No. No, it's not a good fight. It likes to clip through the boards on the walls that it's supposed to hit. It has a very huge hitbox for when it grabs you, so be careful with that. But when it actually charges, it feels like it's a chore to line it up with said board. Still though, a much harder boss fight than any of the bosses from Dead Island 2. Once beating that and once solving the trademark Ban Ban special puzzle of just picking up some random ass items, you had access to the final part. But oh no, Two-Face trapped me down here, gave me another two minute plot dump on how it joke will cause the queen to die and that's probably how queen elizabeth went under last year you do make your way out you do have another four minute walk back to the castle oh my god i swear ban ban just gives me a tumor every time i play it but oh no you do come here too late the queen finally laughs at a joke and fucking dies so you and the frog have to run to the elevator to escape from the joker guy kitty source and the newly released naughty ones and then once you reach the elevator to repair it you have to deal with another plot expo on how the frog wants to yada 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 wait it's it's done the the game is done oh oh my god yeah, yes yes oh my god an hour and 35 minutes i finally beat the game and i can finally refund it to my heart's content <sighs>
and that was Gartna Ban Ban 4. I can go on for another 10 or 20 minutes about how this game absolutely sucks, how the optimization for this was just as bad if not worse than the other chapters. I can talk about the map and how it's just one dark area with three areas to branch off just like the other chapters. I can say how the puzzles are the exact same from every single other Ban Ban game and how it's just nothing but lazy in there to pad out time. I could rip this game a new one in every way describing you how these developers just do not give a shit about this and are only in it for the money but i don't need to as them asking us to wishlist the sixth chapter after only playing chapter four clearly shows us how much they want to mass produce the steaming pile of garbage thank you guys so much for watching this if you guys like this leave a like down below leave a comment down below um give me your social security number anything like that and have a good one